The 36-page document details the thinking behind what the Prime Minister describes as his comprehensive strategy to confront IS. And at its heart is the extension of British airstrikes from Iraq to Syria. British planes and drones would simply join the planes from dozens of major powers, such as the US, France and Russia, who've already bombed nearly 3,000 IS targets. Although the group has adapted, experts say the strikes have disrupted the ability of IS leaders to move around their de facto capital, Raqqa. In recent weeks and months, uh, the effects of drone strikes has really changed the way in which um, ISIS uh, hierarchy are moving around the city. Uh, as soon as a drone or an aircraft is heard overhead, they will disperse into crowds because they know that they won't get um, targeted in that way. Researchers monitoring airstrikes in Syria say coalition forces have put in place strict rules to avoid civilian casualties, but that cannot guarantee that innocent people won't be killed. We agree they are taking real care here, but still, this is war, these are high explosives, and they're mainly being dropped on towns and cities, and sadly civilians will die. Perhaps the most disputed part of the Prime Minister's case is the mention of a 70,000-strong force of Syrian moderates to fight IS. The US spent hundreds of millions of dollars last year training moderate rebels. But it was, by their own admission, a disaster. Many of the rebels defected and sold their weapons to jihadists. Another complicating factor is the fractured and constantly shifting battlefield and the many different groups fighting in Syria. Kurdish Peshmerga forces are some of the most effective fighters in Syria, recently liberating Kobane and Sinjar. But they would find it very hard to fight IS in its Sunni Arab heartland. Here, the most effective groups like Jabhat al-Nusra and Ahrar al-Sham are radical Islamists, more interested in fighting the Assad regime rather than their fellow Sunnis. The only military force on the ground in Syria which has pushed IS back is the army of Bashar al-Assad. The former head of the British Army says in the end, only credible ground troops can destroy IS's caliphate. I believe myself that that requires a ground force. Um, the uh, so-called boots on the ground, I think the key question is whose boots? The other major component of David Cameron's case is the need to find a longer-term diplomatic solution to the crisis, as well as humanitarian relief. Talks bringing together major powers, the Syrian opposition, Arab states and Iran are ongoing in Vienna. But finding a political transition which not only works but is acceptable to everyone, including the traumatized Syrian people, is easy to say but very, very difficult to do. This is also the biggest refugee crisis since World War II. Millions have fled Syria. And in the absence of an internationally backed reconstruction program inside Syria, it's hard to see how they could return even when the guns fall silent. Ragi Omar, News at 10.